These are okay. Oh. Good afternoon. I'm also known as Stoic Dan Online from Orlando, Florida. Today I'm talking to you about uh, Stoicism and the Holocaust, specifically the work of Viktor Frankl, his book Man's Search for Meaning. We use this book in our meetups in Florida, and we found a lot of great engagement in conversation, especially with young people. So the subtitle for my presentation today is How to Engage More of the Young Generation in Stoicism, How to Bring Them to the Table. Uh, we know that life without suffering would not be life as we know it. And the universe is throwing things at us every day. But imagine what if life was, uh, what if that difficulty was excessive and sustainable? In other words, what would life be like in a death camp? That's really what this book is about. Um, the young people today already have stoic instincts. They know that wealth is not connected to happiness, uh, and yet they are distracted by the media and by technology. Uh, their landscape is one of many different stresses. They have college debt, they wonder about their careers, their relationships. Uh, they also have uh, jobs that can be chaotic and without employment benefits. They are also partly disillusioned by recent events. For example, in the USA we had college scandals and we had the Wall Street disaster of 2008. Uh, also, some young people are falling out of religion. Uh, so Stoicism becomes one solution for them that can satisfy their interest in the meaning of life and in fulfillment. And by using Viktor Frankl's book, I think we can get their attention and hold it. Remember, when Frankl wrote about his experience in the death camp, he had many sh stories to uh, share about extreme suffering. There was physical pain from beatings, where he would try to help another prisoner, and he would be beaten. There was prisoner apathy. Sometimes prisoners would come uh, to their bed at the end of the day in full exhaustion, and they would simply say something to themselves like, well, another day is over. There was also prisoner starvation. They had so little food that prisoners would sometimes dream about cooking food and preparing it and serving it on a plate, all in their imagination. And finally, some prisoners used a mental retreat for those, I think Frankl described them as those with an intellectual background. He said some of them used a retreat into their mind as a way of spiritual freedom, because that's one of the very few things they had left. And we, as practicing Stoics, have a similar statement about protecting our fortress. So in summary, I'd like to tell you that Viktor Frankl's works in my experience, can help recalibrate the expectations of young people today, and very importantly, it can bring them to the table to discuss more Stoicism, more philosophy. They can also understand that some of these anomalies that they see on YouTube of people who are unhappy at a restaurant and just destroy the counter because they received cold french fries. Those are anomalies. We have to remember that technology is amplifying that, and it's not reality. So the questions that Frankel poses, not answers all of them, but poses, and these were very engaging to young people, is what is the meaning of life, and is it how I react to difficulty? Is it what we learn along the way? And maybe I can simply just enjoy the beauty of life. So the, the quote that I've chosen for today comes from page 77. Quote, when a man finds that in his destiny it is to suffer, he will have to accept his suffering as his task, 
His single and unique task, his unique opportunity lies in the way in which he bears his burden. So I hope you'll take these ideas home with you, use Viktor Frankl's works to engage young people, and if you'd like more information from me about what I've said today, you can contact me through stoicdan.com. Thank you for your attention.